beautiful people. Happy uh, Church in the Yard Day. Sure is a great day for it. Can we uh, stand if you're able to? And let's, uh, let's just worship. Let's give God thanks. For all he's done, for all he's doing. Lord, we just pray. We ask you to come. We just say, would you come and uh, have your way with us. Have mercy upon us today, God. Have mercy upon us today. Let your spirit come. We ask for your anointing to fall upon this service today. We ask for your heart. We ask for your heart. We just want to know you, God. Draw us close. Let the cares of this world just fall away today. Let them just fall away and melt away. Let them just melt away, God. You're so good to us. You don't treat us as our sins deserve, God. Come, oh God. Holy Spirit, come. Yes, Lord. Well, I'm falling on my knees. Offering all of me. Jesus. Oh, this heart is new. 
fill this place.
nothing better than an outdoor concert for the Lord, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let him know how much you love him. You can never conceive how much the love of God is. We're going to give it back to him with all that we have, right? Right. So I want to welcome everybody to this beautiful Sunday, nice cool breeze. Thank God for this beautiful land that we have and the property that he's given us to use and we want to use it the best that we can. So having a church out here today is pretty cool. If you're a first time guest, we'd love to find out how you got here and have you fill out a connection card that's not in your seat back pockets. So you probably have to get them from an usher if you could. We don't want to sing you out, but we do have something for you. If you drop it in, let us know how you got here. We're going to make a donation of $10 to Pontifex Food Outreach uh, to help feed the needy in this community. Yes. You'd be surprised how many people are hungry. Right here. I saw, you're not hungry. Oh, well, you're welcome. <clears throat> I saw a thing on TV, I can't remember how it was, but there's a high percentage of young people, even in the schools that are hungry, that you don't even know about. So it's important for us to make sure people are fed in that physical way. So we appreciate Pontifex for that. We also have a welcome packet for you that uh, you can have contains a gift of worship music. If you're listening from home today and like to connect with us, have a prayer request, or feel there's something we can do to help assist you, let us know. If you would, go to newhopevenue.org forward slash connect and let us know how we can serve you in some way. So for the VKC kids, uh, Pam, are they going up that way? Yeah. So your outdoor kids church over here to this side, if you will, please find your way over there. I was commenting on how well behaved they are. <laughs> kids always behave outside of the house so much better. <laughs> we have three grandkids in my house, let me tell you. You want to behave, take them somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it is. So a few more announcements. Everybody and anybody, if you have a few minutes next Sunday, after service, stop at the gathering place. We're going to help random acts of kindness, outreach group, fill gift bags. These goodie gift bags will go to student athletes at Ross that participate in cross country, tennis, and golf. Thanks and fans for your help. And trust me, with some of the biggest outreaches that I've seen are people doing stuff for teachers, for kids in the school. That's a whole nother battleground as they go to school and deal with all that comes their way. Letting them know you care about them really matters. It really does. Uh, so thanks in advance for that. It's not too late to join Alpha. Those of you who would like to participate in second sessions this Wednesday starting at 6 with a meal. Sign up the connection card and come and check us out. We'd love to have you there. Ladies, uh, this Saturday coming up, September 24th. What's September 24th, Jay? My birthday. All right. Everybody knows that by now, right? We don't need to say that again. Everybody knows. It'll be our first uh, women's bonfire at the shower house. That's right here. <clears throat> Bring a lawn chair to stack to share, weather permitting. No need to sign up. Just show up. Then on Monday, the 26th, it keeps on rolling at 6.30. The ladies will start a new eight-week Bible study titled, Anxious Fighting Anxiety with God's Word. Books are ten dollars. Make sure you sign up today. So we have the ushers come around, and we're going to take up our gifts and offerings. If you haven't already placed them somewhere, just please be sensitive to that, Lord God. We just thank you for the air that we breathe. We thank you for the protection you keep on our lives. We thank you that you forgive us for all of our misgivings, and and that your grace abounds and is freely given by faith. We choose to be your children. We choose to be part of your family. We choose to forgive one another, to love others as we love ourselves, and to love you with all our heart, mind, and soul, and strength. Thank you, Jesus. We pray for Tony and his words of wisdom and what you've given for us today. We just pray that you continue to be honored in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Oh, hello. That is on. <laughs> if you weren't awake yet, you will be now. We're probably going to bring Tim Cooper, Chris Cooper, and I'm just the go-kart track hears us, and they'd like us to tone it down a little. They can't hear their cars. Well, good morning, everybody. That's a little better. 
It's good to have you here. If this is your first time uh, with us, my name is Tony Buxall. I have the privilege of serving as pastor here. I am glad you were here. And my goal today is to hold on to my notes as the breeze goes uh, so that we can talk about what God wants today. Uh, we are in the middle of this series called We Are Greater Than Me, understanding that together uh, we can do more as a body of believers, as a church, local and around the world. The, the little C and the big C church, together, as we are called to be one body of Christ, we can do more than just uh, we can do as individuals in life. And that's the way God set us up. He created us for community. He created us for family. He created us to be his body. And so we rejoice in that. And so uh, we've been talking about that the last couple weeks now. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, because we don't have a screen to put it up on today, and you want to uh, follow along, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If that sounds familiar to you, you've probably been to a wedding in your life. And, uh, and so I'm going to move my piece of tape over a little bit. There we go. We've been uh, quoting a couple books by Francis Chan, one called Letters of the Church, another one called Until Unity, that talks a lot about uh, the, uh, the church and who we are. One of his, one of his quotes I found uh, astonishing was this. We live in a time when people go to a building on Sunday morning. They attend an hour-long service, and then they call themselves the members of a church. Does that sound shocking to you, he asks. And unfortunately, uh, to most people in America, that doesn't sound that shocking at all. It's like, well, that's what a church is, right? It's a building you go to for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. You throw some money in a plate, you drink a cup of coffee, you say hi to people, you send kids to Sunday school, and that's what church is. But as we've learned over the last couple of weeks, and as we talk about quite a bit here at the Vineyard, uh, church is so much more because you are the church. We, we are the church, and we are greater than me. We have, though, in so many ways as a church worldwide, in so many ways, we have transposed the amazing mysteries of the risen Christ and the wonders of an all-powerful creator and the omnipotence of the Holy Spirit into a comfortable, less offensive one-hour program. And we don't want to do that, do we? We shouldn't just uh, know God or believe in Jesus. We should experience him daily. He should be the biggest part of our life. He's who we are, and we are part of his body. Now, as we have read in our Bibles, and I'm sure you've all been reading your New Testament, and uh, has anybody ever seen in the New Testament where somebody went to church? Well, they gathered but as we read through, we, we've talked about this in the last couple of weeks, the word ecclesia, uh, where we get ecclesia in other languages, and, and in America and in English, we've translated eventually to church. Ecclesia is not about a building we go to. We didn't go to church. We are the church. We never say, hey, did you go to family? Yeah. We say, we are a family. And that's what the church is. We are a family. So today we're going to talk about loving one another because we are family. So let's, uh, let's give this time to the Lord. Father God, come and have your way in this place. Open up our hearts as we open up your word. Speak to us through your love letter to us. The word of God. We want to hear your voice today. We give this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So Jesus commanded us to love one another, right? Am I, am I right here? Am I getting stuff wrong? I don't want to start off wrong. <laughs> he commanded us to love one another. Now the word uh, or the phrase love each other or love one another, depending on what translation you use, appears over 50 times in the New Testament alone. You think, think he was kind of serious about it, right? <laughs> And in John chapter 13, Jesus tells us that people will know that we are his disciples by the love we share for, for one another, the love that we show. Are we showing people that we know God by the love that we have for one another? Do we do that? If people come here, do they go, wow, these people genuinely love each other. They must be Christ's disciples. Now, as we look at that and we look around the, the room today, we go, I don't know if I love everybody. I mean, let's be real, right? Sometimes there's just a, a lack of time. 
Uh, sometimes, to be honest, there may be a lack of grace on our part. And sometimes we just go, that's just too much. And it is, it's a very daunting uh, task. And, uh, but the, the point is, how do we do it? Because we're commanded to do it. It's not like Jesus said, hey, it'd be great if you guys could just kind of like each other, hang out on Sundays, and you know, maybe talk to each other on the phone, go to a Bible study occasionally. He says, love one another as I have loved you. And in the next sentence, he says, and I, as I have loved you, love one another. He reiterates it immediately. So how do we do it? And the only way we can do it as Christ did it is through his power, through the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to stop thinking about these supernatural expressions of love and concern in, uh, with our own human nature because it just doesn't make sense, especially in our world. We cannot love one another the way Christ loved us without the supernatural move of the Holy Spirit. We need to lean on him. We need to desperately rely on Christ if we're going to love one another the way he loves us. So if we are a family, how can we show God's supernatural love to people right here, right now in our church? Because we want to be practical, we want to be spiritual, we want to be emotional, we want to be loving. Now, um, I was reading a story about a guy named Rob, and Rob was talking about this family he grew up with. And the words he used here were words like this, love, good word to start with, camaraderie. He said, we did life together. I was able to call them at any time, day or night. I always, ha they always have my back. They are there for me. They are loyal, committed, and present. Doesn't that sound like a great church? Wouldn't you want to be part of that? That wasn't a church he was talking about. Rob grew up in a gang in L.A. He says, this is what our gang was about. Rob, uh, and, and of course he leaves out a lot of the illegal things <laughs> that they did, but Rob uh, ended up spending some time in jail. He found Jesus, and now he, he uh, leads a church out in uh, San Francisco. But isn't that what church is supposed to be? Love, camaraderie, there for one another, doing life together, being available, being present for one another. Because that sounds like a great description. And uh, I think we should take that back from the gangs and make it what church is about. So how can we, uh, how can we break the consumer mentality of church? The, I'll go to church and, and I'll, I'll give a little bit, but I want to get back a lot. How do we take that off of me? How do we become the family? And the, and the answer is, we work on our own sanctification while carrying out the will of God. Okay? And too many times we go, well, I'm gonna, I want to wait until I'm a little more mature in Christ before I start serving. Well, that's not what the Bible says. If, if you look at the way Jesus, our, our perfect example, did it, he gathered 12 men together and said, come on, let's do this together. And now go do it. Because I'm leaving. Right? And so he calls us to do the same thing. As we work on our own sanctification through the move of the Holy Spirit, we serve one another. Because these two things happen simultaneously. As we serve, we become sanctified. The point is, guys, we do this because people are desperate for love. People are desperate for genuine love. Hear that. Because if you watch your TV like, like I do, and I, I love watching a good movie or some TV, uh, what they call love is not necessarily what the Bible calls love. Nope. Hooking up for one night is not love. And there's something deep inside of us that knows that that's not right. And the Bible talks a lot about love. Now, over the last couple weeks, we've, we've really delved into 1 Corinthians 12, where Paul was talking about the Bible is, is like a human body, or the church is like a human body. It has all kinds of different parts, but, but there's one head, there's only one body, there's one God, there's one spirit. It goes through all the different gifts that he bestows on us through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Things like prophecy and wisdom and healing and miracles and preaching and teaching. 
And he goes through this whole list, and it's, an, it's a beautiful list of gifts. And then he says, but, but there's one stipulation to using these gifts. So at the very end of chapter 12, now remember, the, this book, this letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthians is one letter. It wasn't a whole bunch of little letters put together. Those chapters are just there to help us reference, right? So this is all one continual thought. So as he talks about the different parts of the body, at the very end he says this, but now let me show you a way of life that is best of all. Right? So he's saying, okay, church, God loves you. He's poured out all these gifts on you. Use them to edify one another. Use them to build up one another. Use them to become a family. But let me show you what's best of all. Because then he gives us the greatest caveat of using these gifts. And the, the, that is love. 1 Corinthians 13. Again, you've probably heard this if you've ever been to a wedding. And, uh, and it is great to use at a wedding because... Talking about love on that day, but really in the context of, of this letter, Paul is talking about how we do church. Not just a couple, not a romantic love. He says this, if I speak in the tongue of men and angels, I mean, how cool would that be just to start? I can speak any language, including the language of angels. Wow, what a great gift that would be. But I do not have love. I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. In other words, I can do these things that are supernatural, but if I don't have love in my heart, I'm just an irritant. I can quote scripture all the time, but if I'm not doing it with humility, with genuine love for someone to share the gospel, then it's just irritating. It's pedantic. It, if I have the gift of prophecy and I can fathom all the mysteries and all the knowledge, and I, if I have faith that can move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. For centuries, men have spent time digging and chipping away at mountains to create mountain passes and roadways. And at this point, Paul is saying, yes, but if you have that gift of faith that is so great, you could just move a mountain at a word. Wow, would that be amazing? But yet, if you don't have love, you really have nothing. Finally says, and if I give all I possess to the poor and I give my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. So I can go do all the charity work. I can say, look at me. Look at me giving. Look at how much I've done. Look at me serving. If I don't have love in my heart, it counts for, for nothing in the Lord's eyes. Love is crucial to who we are as a family. It's what breaks down barriers and binds us together, even during the toughest of times. It was, allows us to be united as one people for one purpose, to become the ecclesia of God in spite of or maybe even because of our different gifts and talents and backgrounds and personalities. All of those are brought together. And who else could do that but the Holy Spirit? Because we're all, if we look around, we're all very different here. We come from different backgrounds, different cities. We have different gifts, different talents that we bring to the table. Well, if we can use those all in unity, what could stop us? I'm going to finish this uh, passage of uh, 1 Corinthians 13. And as I read it, I, I'm going to just pause at different parts. And I want you to think about who we are as a church. And we go, a lot of times we'll read this and we'll think, well, it says love is patient, love is kind. But those people weren't patient with me. But as I read through it today, what I want us to do is, I, as I read each one, to pause and go, am I doing that for them? Because when it comes down to it, when we stand before the Lord on the day of judgment, I don't, I, I'm not allowed to say, well, they weren't this way, or they weren't nice to me, or they didn't do that. He's going to say, what did you do, Tony? So as I read through each